Hello everyone, this is Sirius Trivia. Welcome to the final video in our items overview series on Total War 3 Kingdom, as we'll take a look at all the unique armors in the game. Now previously we looked at all the weapons, all the generic armors, all the mounts, all the followers, and all the accessory items, and we provided a tier list for each of them. But for the unique armors in the game, which is correlated to the art of unique characters, we will not be doing a tier list. Now there's a few reasons for this. One reason is because all the armors here are created during different patches and different DLCs. And there are some inconsistencies with the armor stat as well as the bonuses, which we will make note of in this video. But we'll actually have a separate video next week where I will be making recommendations for nerfs and buffs to these armors to fix their inconsistencies. So because of these inconsistencies that exist due to the fact that Perhaps some of the armor created during the Eight Princes are super powerful versus some that were created during Mandate of Heaven that are actually super weak. I will not be providing a tier list because they wouldn't mean much. And in addition to that, a lot of these armor stats are bounded to the unique characters that they are given to because this is the armor that gives them art and all the stat and bonuses of the armor is kind of locked onto these unique characters. And after the item overview series is completely over, probably early February, we'll be doing a unique characters tier list on the channel. And when we do that tier list, I'll be incorporating the stats from these armors into the rankings for that tier list. So I felt like we didn't need to do two tier lists that's kind of correlated to the same thing. So here we're just going to be looking at all the unique armors that are made in the game. And honestly, there are close to a hundred of these, so there's plenty to talk about. So let's take a look at these based on the order that they were introduced in the game. So kicking off with the base game, we have Cao Cao here, and he's first mainly because we're going in alphabetic order of the different classes, and we have commanders coming up early, with Cao Cao being a C name. So the order doesn't matter, don't read too much into it. And Cao Cao's armor here, as we can see, has a base value of 55, so remember this number, 55 is a very good gauge and it's pretty much the armor value given to default armors in the game where if the developer didn't create any stats to adjust for it, 55 is the default stat. In addition to it being a default stat, it's also the stat of the armor for a combat general. So someone who you expect on the battlefield has 55. It's pretty high. It's not a low end number. And most of the armor value you're going to see in the game are actually going to be lower than 55. In addition, you get 18 points of authority, which closely align with the fact that it's also a commander. That's very good. 30% range block chance. This was something that was on generals very early on, and it was taken away in later versions of the game but it was not removed on most of these armors that were introduced early on. And the problem is generals have some default stats for range block chance, and this gives you additional ones. It's a nice addition, but it's not a game breaking addition, especially if you play on higher difficulties where the enemy range units will not fire at your general. Uh, but this is still good for avoiding tower shots. And you also get 12% speed boost for Tsao Tsao on this armor. Pretty nice armor overall. It doesn't look like much, but armors typically don't provide much, and getting 18 points of authority is not a bad thing. Then we have Liu Bei, who is another leader of the Three Kingdoms, and he has 36 armor, so much less than 55, and he has a total of 21 stat points, which is better than the 18 that we just saw. 15 of that is in authority, 6 points of that is in resolve, so he's basically getting a little bit extra health to make up for his lack of armor. And he has two very good abilities. He gets Encourage from Armor, which means he can boost the morale of nearby allies. And he has minus 15% retinue upkeep cost discount from the armor. This is something that you would see in quite a few of the early game armors, and something that I like quite a lot. And if you consider the fact that Liu Bei has 50% discount on militias already, this really makes his retinue quite cheap and quite useful. So this is a very nice uh, armor piece overall. The 36 armor feels kind of bad, but Liu Bei is really not there to be your strong combat force. And if we remember from the weapons overview, Liu Bei, Guan Yu, and Zhang Fei's weapons are actually quite weak. So they're not as strong as you would think they are, but 
Put together, the three of them are quite invincible because of the Othor mechanic that can boost each of their attack when one of them die. And given Nobe's low armor here, he is probably the best one to go and do that for you by dying, by sacrificing himself. Then continuing on with the commanders, we have Liu Biao. So this is a good representation of cloth armor or robes. The base value of these armor typically is 10. And he's getting 18 point authority, which is pretty typical for being a commander class faction leader. 30% range block chance and minus 15% revenue upkeep. So not too much to talk about here. A bit of a combination between Cao Cao and Liu Bei. And then moving on, we have Liu Zhang, who's all the way out west in the Shu lands. He has 10 points armor. It's once again, another robe armor. No special bonuses, but a combined of 21 points of stat split among expertise and instinct. This is quite an interesting combination because he is a commander, so his stat that's aligned with him is authority, and he is likely to become a faction leader after his father's death, but you don't get any authority from Liu Zhang's armor, which is a bit odd. And both of these stats here, expertise is kind of aligned with administrator, but overall, instinct and expertise can be great combat stats, but Liu Zhang is not really powerful. So hopefully when he becomes a future free LC Lord, I hope they update his armor to give him a bit more authority and a bit more color. Maybe just one or two additional bonuses would be helpful as well. Then continuing on, we have Sun Quan, who has 45 armor, so a new value here, a little bit in between Liu Bei and Cao Cao's armor stat. He gets 15 points of authority, so not super high there, but not bad, and 12% speed. So pretty average all around. The speed boost on a commander is pretty useful, I have to say, because you have mobility as a skill that can boost your speed a bit more. And then you also can get unbreakable. So they technically make for really awesome looping generals. So Sun Quan can definitely do that for you, but that's pretty much all you get out of his armor. Then moving on, we have Yuan Shao, who has probably one of the most decked out commander armors in the game. 70 base armor, that's very high. 15 points of authority plus 6 points of instinct for a total of 21 points. That's also pretty high. And you get 5% melee attack rate on himself. That's probably a weaker boost. Uh, now, you do get 6 points instinct. So they're kind of pushing Yuan Shao as a fighter here because you get the high armor and you also get the instinct to boost your melee attack. And then you get 5% additional melee attack rate on top of that. So maybe consider putting your Yuan Shao out there a bit more. Give him a good sword. Have them fight a few duels. And you'll do pretty well because 70 armor is actually quite high. And then we have his brother, Yuan Shu, who has a robe, armor, 10 points, 15 authority, 6 points of cunning, and 30% range block chance. So pretty defensive here. Cunning is good for range, but mainly you're going to use him for authority and for faction leader bonuses. Not really combat worthy with his 10 armor. Then we have Dong Zhuo. As we move into the vanguards here, as you can see, the commanders are exhausted from the base game. You get 80 points of armor on Dong Zhuo, which is actually massive. 15 points of instinct, his substat, 6 points of authority, which is great because he is a faction leader. He also gets 5% melee attack rate. He has a couple very nice skills for combat, so he's very strong. And the 80 armor definitely proves the point, plus the 5% melee attack rate boost makes him a very strong duelist or just as officer fighting on the battlefield. He starts out with a very good sword as well. So he's going to be very powerful on the battlefield. Then we have Gan Ning. So Gan Ning here as a pirate wears slightly lighter armor. You can see the bells and whistles and feathers on his armor. It's very correlated to the Romance of Three Kingdom with some of his feats. You get 47, which is not shabby. 47 is pretty good. And since he is one of the general that uses Hell of Arrows, he gets six points of cunning. It doesn't really do much here. I mean, if you give him a bow, it gives him a little bit of extra ammo. You're not really going to be putting range unit on Vanguard. Maybe horse archers, but I don't think that makes sense because usually you'd be playing him in Sun Tzu's faction perhaps, and you get high melee charge bonus. You might as well put those shock cavalries on him. 15 points of instinct, he gets charge reflect on himself, which is very interesting because this means if you have gunning braced and allow an enemy cavalry to charge you, you do take damage because you don't have charge negate, but you can kill off some of that cavalry by making them suicide into you. 
which is very strange to find on Vanguard, but very interesting nonetheless. It's one of those few interesting bonuses on armors that we'll find. Then moving on to Gong Sun Zan. He has a pretty decked out armor, 65 points, not bad. 15 points of instinct, 6 points of authority, which correlates with the fact that he's a faction leader. The 12% speed is obviously great because you also have mobility on Vanguard, so he'll be a very fast general on the battlefield. But other than that, he doesn't get any other bonuses, but still pretty well designed. You get a high armor base value, you get the instinct for your attack to work with your Vanguard stats, and then you also get a little bit of authority to work with the fact that you are a faction leader. Then moving on, we have Sun Ren, who has 55 base armor. That is average. I want to say that's the value you want to kind of judge armor on. We'll see that once we see a couple of future patches come in, you see a lot of the base value was 55. And she gets 18 points of instinct, which is pretty good. 40% extra ammo. So you might not know this, but if you give her her bow and let her keep it, she can shoot a lot longer and also deal more damage because ammo correlates to total damage output. 15% range block chance, so a bit lower there, and 6% speed, a bit lower there, but a lot of bonuses on this one. Pretty interesting. Then we have Li Wu, who probably has one of the strongest armor in the game. He has 80 points armor base value, 6 points expertise, 15 points instinct, correlates well with Fakis of Vanguard, also all combat stats. He gets 15% chance to evade capture post-battle. Now when you are using him, this is probably not going to be super relevant, because you probably won't lose with him. But if you are fighting against him and hope to capture him and recruit him through post battle, this makes it a bit harder because it's on his armor. You can never really get rid of this. He gets 12% extra speed and 5% melee attack. So all very good stats for Vanguard. Very, very strong armor here in the game. Then we have Ma Chao, who also have a great armor. So it's basically Lu Bu's armor without the evasion and attack speed. Everything else is exactly the same. So Ma Chao is also quite strong as a duelist, thanks to his armor stat, as well as his instinct and expertise boost, and just running around is also great with 12% speed boost. Then we have his father, Ma Teng, who prefers a little bit of extra fur, and has only 60 base armor value, 18 points of instinct, which should be better if he splits some of that to authority since he is a faction leader, but nevertheless, 12 points of charge bonus, which is the first time we see charge bonus on armor, that's very helpful. Vanguards do charge a lot, so you do get a little extra value there on your melee charge bonus. Then we have Sun Ce, who actually needs an armor buff. Now, of course, the character is so broken that even without the armor buff, he's fine. But 45 points base armor, not very high there. I'm okay with that, because he does tend to be a bit reckless. He dies to assassination on a hunting trip, so wearing slightly less armor for perhaps speed is definitely something that would make sense on him. 18 points of instinct, sure, that's average, nothing wrong with that, and 12% speed. But it just feels so lacking. When they made him into this star in a world betrayed, perhaps they could have buffed his armor a bit to give him some bonuses on his armor. But to be honest, Sun Tzu doesn't really need it. When you get him, you're super happy because you got double charge bonus right away and half cost to colonizing new land. And then we have Xia Hou Yuan's armor, 68 armor stat. Very weird number, but it's a high number. So for someone who's highly underrated due to his lack of unique skills or lack of good unique skills on his skill tree, his armor is decent. You get 68 armor value, you get 18 instinct, 30% range block chance, which is something they like to do in the beginning of the base game. And then you get 15% retinue upkeep discount which is always useful because shock cavalries aren't cheap, but it will be cheaper on Xia Hou Yuan. Then we have Zhang Fei, 55, very average, 18 points of instinct, and the best skill you can get on an armor piece, fatigue immunity. Zhang Fei will never get tired, but he will break. So try to get him unbreakable or else he's going to lose morale and flee instead of kiting around forever because Vanguard don't have a lot of health. So when they take damage, they lose quite a bit of morale. He also gets 5% melee attack rate, so very good overall. Then we have Han Sui as we move beyond the vanguards into the Sentinels. We see 47 base armor, we've seen this number before, it's just slightly less than 55. You get 15 points of expertise, 6 points of resolve. It's fine, it's very combat focused, he's not a playable faction, so technically he's never really going to be your leader, so authority missing here is fine. In the future, when he becomes a leader, perhaps this will be a small problem, 
but you get 5% melee attack rate. It's pretty good as a general. So you pick him up. He's a very strong combat general. Could be a very good administrator as well. You get cost discount and additional population growth from expertise and resolve. Then we have Huang Zhong, who doesn't wear a lot of armor. 32, a lot of cloth here. The robe under this, you know, leather covering. And he has 18 points of expertise, correlate with his stat, pretty normal there. 15 points of satisfaction on him, which is actually quite interesting. Makes him difficult to steal. It's probably the challenge of getting the Five Tiger General achievement because he's usually the one that's missing. And the reason is he's old, so he has a chance to die. And he has this satisfaction boost, which makes him hard to steal from turncoats. He also get 5% melee attack rate, which is kind of weird considering that he is usually a range general. I'm surprised to not find the 40% ammo boost that you saw on Sun Ren's armor on Huang Zhong's armor as well. But this is still good. Sentinels are great duelists, getting extra attack rate and also getting more attack rate from his skill tree makes him quite a formidable duelist. Then we have Sun Jian, 45 armor, just like his son. 15 points of expertise, 6 points of instinct, 12% speed. Not much to talk about here. This is very similar to his horse stat, where you get expertise and instinct. Not much authority, but you do start out the game with a very good sword that has authority and the imperial seal, so you can't really be complaining here. Then you have Tai Shi Ci, who has 32 armor, very similar to Huang Zhong. They're designed about the same, sentinels that shoot arrows. He gets much more ammo-related stat of cunning. So 15 points of expertise, 6 points of cunning, and then a 12% speed on top of that. Not bad. Then we have Xu Huang. So he is the brute force of the Sentinels, very close to a champion, and he gets stats similar to that. So 65 armor base, very strong. 18 points of expertise for more evasion on top of armor. He also gets unbreakable on his armor, making him very powerful. But also keep in mind, if you're fighting him on the battlefield, there's no way to keep him alive. So if he's low on resiliency, don't fight him because you have to kill him. And he gets 15% retinue upkeep, which is nice. This is a very nice armor set here on Xu Huang. Then you have Yue Jin, which is very boring. This is the low effort exhibit of armor making. 55 base, which I mentioned is the default value. 18 points of stat, correlated exactly to their class. Also, default value. Nothing to see here. Then we have Zhang Liao, who loses a bit of the armor to get a little bit of melee attack rate, which is fine for Sentinels because most of your combat stats or defense stat comes from evasion and not armor. And you're also getting fast attack rate for your technically lower attack, which can be boosted with Tenacity of Steel, which John L does not have, by the way, because his unique ability replaces that. Um, but regardless, extra attack speed, which can be combined with your other 40% attack speed from your skill tree, Always a good addition to generals you want to use as duelist. Then Zhao Yun has 55 armor, 18 points of stat. Those are average, 30% range block chance, and 12 points of charge bonus. Nothing too crazy here, and also nothing that will boost his evasion or armor farther than the default values. No attack speed buff, but really Zhao Yun doesn't need help. He has his unique ability. He's the best duelist in the game, hands down. He doesn't really need any additional help. And then we have Kong Rong as we move into the strategists. We have a lot of robe wear here, so 10 points of armor, 15 points of cunning, which matches with his class, 6 points of authority, which matches with the fact he's a faction leader, 30% range block chance, just something they like to do on armors of generals when the game was released, and you also have encourage, which is nice, even though I don't know what Kong Rong ever did in history that encourages troops. Then moving on, we have Sima Yi here. Now, Sima Yi has a very weird armor. So I don't know if this was the original design for strategist because two of the most famous strategists in the game wears robes, but only have three armor. They're extremely fragile, and Sima Yi is one of them. And you have 18 points of cunning, 15% renew upkeep, 12% speed. All very useful stats, but the armor is really low. And then continue this theme of strategists with low armor, we have Zhuge Liang here, who also has 3 points of armor, 18 points of cunning, 30% range block chance, 12 points of charge bonus. Why? Why would Zhuge Liang, who is famously known to sit on a wheelchair in battle, 
use 12 points of charge bonus. He didn't sit on wheelchair, but he didn't sit on horses either. So charge bonus doesn't really make sense for him. And the three points of armor is really against the rules here. They're the only two generals that has three points of armor. As you can see, if we flip to Tao Tian here, you get 10 points of base armor, 15 points of cunning, six points of instinct, which I actually like because Tao Tian's portrayed very differently in history versus Romance of Three Kingdoms. Romance of Three Kingdom, he feels like an old man who's a victim of Cao Cao. But in reality, he was kind of a hot-headed general who invaded a lot of Cao Cao's territories because Cao Cao was invading his territory. He definitely ordered the hit on Cao Cao's father. So a little bit of Vanguard stat here makes sense. 12% speed, I don't really understand because I don't know if you want your strategist running around like that. Uh, it's kind of weird, but I think it works in terms of the instinct. It's just adding a little bit of vanguard flavor to Tao Tian, even though he looks like a little old man in the game. Then we have Zhou Yu, who actually has some combat stat. He has double health compared to Strategist, and he has 40 armor, which is great. You get 18 points of cunning. That part's still the same. You get unbreakable on him, which is rather weird, but we'll take it. And 12 points of charge bonus which is also a little weird, but given that the Wu faction in the game has a lot of vanguards, focuses a lot on cavalry and charge bonuses, this is okay. This works well with Sun Tzu's bonus, even though it doesn't work well historically. And Unbreakable Double Health makes him a decent combat general too. Then as we move away from strategists, we have Dian Wei here, who has 75 points of armor base, 15 points of resolve, 6 points of instinct, 12% speed. So here we have a very interesting set that I think could use a little bit of change. The main change is I don't think he needs speed. Dan Wei doesn't really run away from the fight consider he died Holy War style holding down a hallway while Cao Cao made his escape. Maybe just give him like 30% range block chance. That makes more sense thematically. The higher armor obviously help, resolve and instinct obviously help. So he's a pretty strong combat general. Then we have Guan Yu, who has slightly lower armor than the 55 default 50, which is okay, because we mentioned the three brothers are strong because they're oath thorns, so that all their stats, whether their armor or their weapons, are actually on the weaker end of things. 15 points of resolve, 6 points instinct, good distribution there, 30% range block chance. That also makes sense, because Guan Yu has a few stories with arrows, even though he got shot with them, he recovered, because there's the episode where we have Gua Gu Liao Shang, which is him, you know, sanding down his bones uh, because there's poison on it from the poison arrow that he took and him not flinching uh, during the whole period. But maybe that's a sign that he doesn't have actually good range block chance. And perhaps he can just switch this with Dian Wei because Dian Wei tanked a lot of arrows and Guan Yu here had really fast speed because he eventually gets the red hair so maybe 12% speed comes to Guan Yu and 30% range block chance goes to Dian Wei but we'll talk about all these nerfs and changes in our next video this one is just an overview to complete our item overview series then moving on we have Xia Houdun 55 armor 18 points resolve very average here another case of charge reflect so Xia Houdun himself has charge reflect you can try to use this to hurt enemy cavalries you need to be braced though you also get 15% retinue upkeep discount, very useful. Very good armor overall. Everything's default value, but the bonuses are really, really good. Then we have Xu Chu, who only has 32 armor. Now before you complain about this, this is the guy in Romance of Three Kingdom who took his armor off and fought naked, at least upper body naked, against Ma Chao for day and night. So having low armor here makes some sense, even though historically he was in charge of the heavy cavalry, so he probably was decked out in armor. But you get 18 points of resolve and 15% retinue upkeep, and that's good. Retinue upkeep is very useful, and if you have been paying attention, Cao Cao's faction has a lot of generals with retinue upkeep. So, a lot of advantages for playing as Cao Cao. And then we have Zhang Yan here, very good armor once again. 47 base value, not high. 6 points of expertise, 15 points of resolve, all combat focus, and most of all, fatigue immunity. You can't really ask for more on general. And unlike Zhang Fei, who also has this, champions have a lot of health. They don't actually lose a lot of morale very often. And the stubborn trait, which is a green trait, so champions have a higher chance of getting it, gives you unbreakable. So it's easier for champions to get unbreakable and to take advantage of fatigue immunity. 
versus a Vanguard. So this is a perfect build for Zhang Yan here. Then Zheng Jiang, 55, 15, 6. Nothing special, no bonuses. A little extra stats, you know, you could have seen 18 points resolve and just be done with it. You get 21, so that's not bad. Split among two combat stat. Kind of not good for the fact that you are a faction leader, but it's not shabby. I mean, sure, you would like to see other bonuses, but this will do. And with that, we're actually done with the base game, as we'll start jumping from DLC to DLC and patch to patch. And the first DLC that we'll mention is the Yellow Turban DLC, which was a pre-order bonus. And this one features six Yellow Turban Generals. He Yi here has his own faction and his own armor. 45 base, okay, you know, a lot more cloth to it. He has little bags over them, kind of like a hobo style. If you ever read any martial art novel where there was Sky Bunk or the Beggar's Clan, uh, they kind of wear stuff like this. And he gets 9 points of resolve, 12 points instinct, so he sums up to 21, which is the value you get when you split stats, because you get the 15 versus 6 for the Han Generals. Here you get 9 and 12, very similar. Combat focus, mighty knockback on him, so you get more charge impact when you charge in. Overall, pretty good set. And then you have He Man, who works under He Yi in the game. He gets 50 points of armor, a little bit stronger here. 12 points of cutting, 9 points of instinct, so still the 21 point split between two stats here. He does have Hail of Arrows, that's why he has the cunning focus, and he has 25% range damage. So that's also something that correlates to Hail of Arrows. He also has Mighty Knockback. He's very strong in the game because of his skill tree. So very strong armor to complement that with his special feature of Hail of Arrows, as well as his ability to knock back enemies the 9 points of instinct and 12 points of cunning, all complement that very nicely. Then we have Huang Shao, who surprisingly has an armor that gives 50 points, because I thought he would be like the scholar feature who kind of is a robe figure, but they have him as kind of a scholar warrior, which is one of his unique unit. So you get 50 points here, you still get the 21 point split between expertise and authority, which is nice, and also 5% melee attack rate, so if anything he's more of a sentinel feel, with the expertise focus as well as the melee attack rate focus. And the man working under him is Pei Wen Shao, who has a real armor, 72 points, not bad. Expertise and resolve split of 12 points and 9, 15% ability recharge rate. So this means less cooldowns for him to use his abilities. And that's about it. It's one of those bonuses that's nice to have, but not super game changing because you only have so many active abilities and it's just not that useful. Then moving on, we have the last Yellow Turban faction in Gongdu, who has real armor. His faction's more of the military general style. You get the 70 point base here, 12 points resolve, split with 9 points of cunning, which is very interesting because he doesn't remind me of any range component, but these two colors has more to do with the Yellow Turban class system. So that's why the green and the blue are mixed. That's kind of the warp color that he gets as a veteran. And you get 30% range block chance, 5% melee attack rate. Pretty decent, nothing to say here. Then we have Zhang Kai, who is his subordinate here. 72 armor base, also very high armor base. 12 points resolve, 9 points of instinct. Pretty good split for a general on the battlefield. And 5% melee attack as well. That seems to be a very common theme among the Yellow Turban Generals. And then moving on from the Yellow Turban Generals, we have the Eight Princes released after that. And the Eight Princes armors are all very strong as well as the eight princes themselves, as they are the only unique characters from that DLC. So they got huge buffs as faction leaders, each and every one of them. So Sima Lun here has a robe, but instead of 10 points of armor base, he gets 25. And instead of the typical 18 points or 21 points stat boost, he got 55 points. 30 in cunning, 8 in instinct, 17 in authority. Huge stat boost, and also 12% speed. So the main difference you're going to see here is just more stats. Not necessarily better bonuses, but just more stats on all these characters. Then we have Smayu, 75 armor, very high. Only 25 points of stats. You know, we say only, even though the base game characters max out 21. So you have 15 points of cunning, 10 points of instinct. You get speed bonus, charge bonus, he's a vanguard. All the stats make good sense, except for the cunning, which is kind of weird, but we'll live with it. Then we have Sima Wei. Sima Wei has 45 base armor, which is actually surprisingly low because it looks like a real armor piece here, even though it's kind of decorative. 
you get 25 stats only, 5 resolve, 20 instinct. Still very sad to not hit, you know, the 55 mark that you saw as Smodlin. But you get 5% melee attack rate and another 12 points of charge bonus. Then moving on, we have Sima Yue, also 25 points, 50 armor. This is also a little bit lower on the armor side given the look. I guess there are a lot of cloth component here. They're all very decked out in Jade. You get 17-8 split in Expertise and Instinct, which is a weird split, um, but we'll live with that. 30% range block chance. This was still before the range block chance change. Uh, they're just better avoiding arrows, I guess. 5% melee attack rate. Then Sima Yin. Also 25 points, 21 of them on Cunning, 4 points on Expertise. You know, for someone who is described as dim-witted in the game, he obviously ends up with a lot of Cunning somehow. And you get 20 points of base armor, so double of what Cloth Armor usually gives you. You get 15% chance of evading capture post-battle, and 40% extra ammo. So him as a character in the game will actually get a ton of ammo if you give him a bow, because you get high cunning as well as high ammo. And with the alignment system from 8 Princes, for those of you who have actually played it, you can get even more ammo. So if you give Samayin a really good bow with high damage, he can actually hurt enemies very effectively by sniping their generals. Then we have Sima Ai, who has 55 points of armor base, 3 points of expertise, 22 points of resolve. So we see average figures now. Sima Lin was kind of an outlier there. 25 is the typical total value. Split really weirdly for everyone. 3 and 22, right? It's a new number combination every time. 15% renew upkeep is nice. 5% melee attack is nice. As one of our favorite generals from the Eight Princes, or our favorite prince from the eight princes and the only one we played a let's play on it's not bad the retinue upkeep is nice he's focused on building so he's kind of an economic focused prince here and then we have samajul who also has 25 points but once again split in a new combination 10 points of instinct 15 points of authority 55 armor so that's average number 12 percent speed 5 percent melee attack rate nothing too crazy here samaliang also, the 10-15 split between Expertise and Resolve, 55 base, very average. He also gets a retinue upkeep, which is nice because he has the early version of the Imperial Troop as his special unit, so they're quite pricey, and also 30% range block chance on top of that. Then we're done with the Eight Princes, and the game got complaints during this period of time, where the Eight Princes introduced too few characters, and also the characters are not usable in the base game. There's too few unique characters in the game so let's add a few so we got a free patch actually with four characters given out for free during this period they stopped doing this so maybe if we complain some more we'll get some new characters in patches so hopefully i think the best strategy going forward is actually just to do periodic patch releases where they just introduce one or two new character arts each time without even adding some content i think the fan base would be very happy about that but regardless, we got four characters. These armors have been patched a few times since their release, so their number is actually pretty reflective of where things should be. Pantong here has 10 points of base armor for cloth, makes total sense, 18 points of cunning, matches with the base game, encourage, plus three morale when attacking. Not bad. And then we have Guojia, which was also added during this patch, 10 points of armor, 18 points of cunning. Character experience boost, 10% for this entire army, not bad. 15% speed, which is a little weird on strategists every time I see it. It's a high value, usually it's 12%, but this is 15% here. Then we have Jiaxu, who has a very similar setup, except he gives his own retinue snipe. You might not know this, but Jiaxu's retinue always has snipe, which makes them quite powerful in the forest. Because if you can hide them there and shoot all their ammo for free, you can do a lot of damage with your range unit without worrying about retaliation. Makes him quite good during ambush battles as well. He also has a 15% speed, which is a little confusing, even though he does have some offensive abilities where he needs to get up and close and personal with the enemy general to do damage. But overall, pretty interesting. The snipe is something new and something that's very welcome here. And then we have Huang Gai, who actually got a class change during this patch. He used to be a champion, believe it or not, but now he's a vanguard because... All the Wu generals need to be vanguards, apparently. 45 points of armor base, very similar to all the other Wu generals, actually, because the two other generals with this figure is Sun Jian and Sun Ce. And you get 18 points of instinct, 10% melee armor piercing damage. That's new. That's quite nice, because if you give him a weapon focus on that, that's a huge damage increase. He also gives his own retinue scare, 
which is also very powerful. It's not him being an able scare. It's that his retinues all can cause scare. So those are scary cavalries that will be charging into the enemy, making Huang Gai actually quite useful. Then we have the Mandiv Heaven Patch, which is, comes with a DLC, of course, and we got a bunch of characters added in, including Lady Bian. 55 armor base. This is where the developers got lazy. They put the default value for the armor, and they didn't change it because it's a robe. So she shouldn't have 55 armor base. This should be 10 points. But right now in the game, Lady Ben's a pretty powerful general on the field with some decked out metallic silk on her dress. And you also have 18 points of authority, 15% range box chance. So this got scaled back a little bit because this is also when we saw the arrow nerfs. So the arrows didn't do as much damage, and therefore we saw a 15% even though you really need to consistently change everything. 30% speed boost, making her probably the best looping general in the game. Mobility, unbreakable, 30% additional speed boost. Give her a common horse and let her just loop enemies around Chen, and she will own them all with her higher armor base. Then we have Lady Mi, which strangely has 40 base armor. So here, you know they didn't just write 55 in, but then they saw this dress and decided this dress is worth 40 when Zhuge Liang and Sima Yi's rogues are worth 3. So, very weird here. Needs to go down to 10 in my opinion. 18 points of authority still. 15 points of melee evasion, which is another defensive stat, so I don't know why they need so high of armor value. And then you have 15% chance range block chance. So, that's pretty consistent what we saw with Lady Bian. But the armor value needs to go down. Xu Shu, who was also introduced here with the armor, but 10 armor base. So Xu Shu was described as a swordsman in his youth. And also I think he has double health as well, similar to Zhou Yu, but he's wearing an armor that's only worth 10 points when the two ladies we just saw have robes that are worth 55 and 40. This needs to get fixed too. A lot of the mandate of heaven <laughs> needs to get fixed. 10% retinue upkeep, not as good as 15%, but it's not bad, and they also have 15% speed on him. So all the speed figure went from 12% to 15% here. I think this also might have to do with the fact that horse speed was changed around this time as well. There was a patch change, so maybe they decided the speed figure needed some changing, but the old ones are still 12%, so that's still weird. And if we move on, we have Ling. So Ling here, 70 armor base value, that's fine. His armor looks great. 18 points of instinct, 30% range block chance. So we see 30 come back on him. So maybe better armor, better range block chance. 15% speed, that's fine. So not being too crazy here. Just this one's well designed in my opinion. All the stats make sense to what you see. And then we have Chen Pu's armor, 45. Once again, the magic number for the Wu faction. You have 18 points of expertise, 15 points of melee evasion, 15% speed boost, and we're moving into a world betrayed here as well. So he's getting good speed, good evasion, which is great for sentinels who are duelists because expertise also increased that. And then the armor is okay because you're getting mainly your defensive stat from melee evasion anyways. He comes close to being a good duelist compared to Zhao Yun, but falls a little bit short due to his skill tree. And then we have Zhou Tai who probably doesn't need any of these stats. You know, Zhou Tai just gets Undying Vow and just wins. So you don't need 75 armor, but it's nice to have. You don't need 18 points of instinct, 5% melee attack rate, and 12 charge bonus. Uh, but these are good. This is a good armor set. And then we have Gao Shun, 70 base armor. Okay, pretty good. 18 points of instinct, 5% armor piercing damage, and 5% melee attack rate. So if you notice anything, all the A World Betrayed ones we see so far have their armors and stats adjusted pretty well, whereas the Mandate of Heaven ones are not adjusted very well. But let's continue. We also have Chen Gong's armor here. 10 points base. Makes sense. He's wearing a robe. You get the 18 points of cutting, 30% range block chance, 15% speed. Fine. That's great. And then Diao Chan. 10% armor base, 18 points of cunning. 25% melee evasion, and then 15% range block chance, 15% speed. So a lot of bonus across the board, 
and I think it's all right. The evasion's a very big defensive stat given to her here, but she's a strategist. I think overall it's like you don't need any of these for her, but sometime for her unique ability, you might want to get her close to enemy generals. So these defensive bonuses will help her, and the 15% speed will help her escape because she does have low armor. So I think that part is pretty well designed, and stat obviously being a strategist, you know, defaults to 18, cunning, that's fine. Then we have Da Qiao, 10 point armor base, makes total sense. A little bit of speed bonus, we have a new number here, 10%. So it's not 12, it's not 15, it's not 30, it's 10%. You get plus two morale when attacking. Okay, interesting. And then we have her sister, of course, Xiao Qiao, 10 points armor base, 18 points expertise, 10 point evasion, and 10% character experience. So I think she takes after her husband, historically, Zhou Yu, who is the strategist in the game with double health. She is a strategist in the game with sentinel stats. 18 points of expertise, 10 points evasion, and then she gets some character experience boost for herself. It's interesting. I don't think it works well with her though. It'd be better if you give her actually some cunning because she is a strategist and her sister being a commander gets authority. So I don't know why she has to be different and get expertise instead. Maybe it's a mistake. Maybe this just needs to be changed. Then we have the two Zhang. So we have Zhang Hong. 10 points of armor, 18 points of cunning, very standard. 15% speed, 15% range block chance, not too much to see here. Zhang Zhao, very similar. He has 30% ammo, which is a better bonus in my opinion, and 15% speed as well. So both of them pretty well designed, nothing to complain about here. Then we also have Li Jue. So these are the tertiary characters, the faction leaders that during World Betray they got unique art. 65 armor base, pretty good. 18 points instinct, standard. 10% melee armor piercing damage, 15% speed, pretty decent. And then we also have Liu Yao, 55 points armor. So very average, very average stats, 15% speed. Seems like everyone here got 15% speed for some reason. And also two points of morale when attacking. Then we have Wang Lok, who has too much armor. He's the only one I have to complain about during a world betrayed. He's wearing a robe, let's be realistic here. Just because he's a commander doesn't mean he needs armor. Should be about 10 points here, or at least less than 50. And then you have 18 points of authority, which is good, faction leader. 15% range block chance, 15% speed. So the only thing that needs to be changed is really just the armor. And then we have Yan Bai Hu, who looks pretty decked out here with his armor, but only 50 points of armor base, 18 points of expertise, 15 points of melee evasion, he does get stock enabled on his own retinue, not snipe, but stock, which is still good because you can get snipe from a basic bandit strategist skill and then you can just combine the two where you can just fire on land. You don't have to fire in a forest. So you can do stock and snipe fire arrows now with this combination and then 15% speed. So that part is just given to all the armors here in a world betray for some reason, but overall not bad. And then we have his brother, Yan Yu, who is a champion. A uh, little bit extra armor, sure. Default value armor, default value resolve. 10 points of melee evasion, useful, because he also has skill and his background that gives additional melee evasion, so that kind of thematically works. 15% speed, that's just standard now. And then we go back to Mandate of Heaven, because we have a few armors that has no armor stats. These are the non-deployable characters that were added, and that's the Emperor's Robe for Liu Hong. Ton of stats. 20 points of resolve, 80 points of authority. 8 points of public order faction wide, minus 10 cover costs for enemy spies, minus 10 undercover network costs for enemy spies. So prone to getting hit by spies, be careful who you recruit. 8 points of public order faction wide, which is nice even though you don't own a lot of land, but authority. Authority is where things stand out. And I don't know why you would need resolve because think about it. You can't be an administrator, so you can't boost population. You can't be on the field, so you can't have health. But 80 points of authority, very useful, because you are always faction leader. You're always going to be boosting the satisfaction with this. The morale component, we can just forget about. And then we have, obviously, other princes during this period. So Liu Chong got put in here, even though he should have been shown earlier. 75 armor base, 15 points of authority. It's weird. I think Mandate of Heaven just is very weird. So here, the armor looks right. The authority looks wrong. Like, default is 18 at the minimum. If you have 15, there should be 6 points of something else, but there's nothing else, and he has no other bonuses, which is just weird. 
you should have some range bonuses, right? Range damage, 25%, maybe range armor piercing damage for crossbow, maybe additional ammo, something, you know, to go with his theme. He doesn't need the help, obviously, with his trophies, but still, it'd be nice to see it on his armor. Then we have skinny Dong Zhuo, who in-game has the same armor as fat Dong Zhuo, so there's not much to talk about here. I just want to show the skinny Dong Zhuo art. And then we have Empress Hua's robe. Another character that's non-deployable, but somehow got an armor base value. So slight inconsistency here. Typical of Mandate of Heaven. 10 points of armor base, 6 points of expertise, 15 points of instinct. It almost feels like she's deployable. She's following all the rules. And then she gets the plus cover cost to make up for her husband's mistakes. So here, they're just faction-wide. Doesn't even say she has to be in any role. So she passively make it harder to spy on you, but the husband makes it very easy with minus 10, minus 10. So you're still minus 5, minus 5. But the fact that you have Empress Hua here helps you out a little bit. Then we have He Jin. Once again, just feels unfinished. 40 points of armor, that part is okay. And then 15 points of expertise. And that's it. Not much to talk about here. And then we have the three brothers in the north. We have Zhang Jiao. He's wearing robe. 10 point armor, that's totally fine. 20 point authority, that's also fine. And 5 points satisfaction. I think this one's well designed. This is probably the armor they started out designing because, you know, John Zell is the main antagonist here. So this follows a lot of the rules. And then his brothers, Zhang Bao. Sure, 35. They don't have good armor as ill turbans. I agree with that. Why only 15 points of resolve? Once again, very confused here. And Zhang Nao has good armor, 55 points but only 15 points of resolve as well. So also a bit weird with the lack of stats on these. Lu Zhi suffered from the same problem. His armor value is right, 10 points, but his stats just pitifully low. Give him another six points of authority. Gives him 10% character experience gain. That would make a lot more sense than just this. Then we have his Lieutenant Huang Fu Song, 60 points of armor, sure. 15 points of expertise. Give him another six points of cunning. He has hell of arrows. Give him some ammo stats. That makes a lot more sense. Then we have Xun Yu. Xun Yu here has 10 points of armor base. That makes sense. 18 points of cunning. 5% character experience in this army. Discipline on own retinue. So this is an example of a you know, well thought of armor. Give the 5% character experience or make it 10% to Lu Zhi. That makes total sense as well. And have the stats be consistent. If you're going to give them 15 main stats, give them a secondary stat that's worth 6. Or give them 18 points of main stat like this one here. And then we have a few more of the attendants. Oh, these are really mixed up. So the 10 eunuchs, which are 13 people in total. I know it's called the 10 eunuchs, but it's actually 13 eunuchs. Um, it's just historically known. The phrase is coin the 10 eunuchs. And there are three different armors for the 10 eunuchs. So Cao Ding here has a very special one because he's the chancellor at the beginning of the game. And his just gives 55 points of stat, which is the max. You saw it on Sima Lun as well. And it's 15 points of authority, 10 points of everything else. Nothing else. Still very cool. And then we have five of the 13 eunuchs here with the minister robe or the yellow robe. And it's 50 points of stat. And then you have seven of the 10 eunuchs with the courtier robe, which is also 50 points of stat. Nothing crazy to see here. Then we can jump out of Mandate of Heaven and go to the Furious Wild, which is the latest DLC where we got a lot of Nanman generals. And starting with King Meng Huo, we have 44 points of armor, slightly less than 55, makes sense. 18 points of authority, follows the rules. 10 points of melee evasion, 30% range block chance, and we're back to 12% speed. So a world betrayed, everyone's 15% or 30%, even some 10%. Here we're back to the standard 12%. Okay. Consistency, once again, is questionable here. And then Lady Zhurong, 44 points. That's the same as her husband. 18 points of instinct. Melee evasion, range, watch, and speed. Very similar. Then we have King Wulu, also 44. 18, 10, 30, 12. Looks familiar? We're just changing the cunning stat here to the class that's correlated with the general, which is classless, but there's a stat with them. Shamal Ke is where things get slightly interesting. You get two stats. You get... 10 points of expertise, 8 point authority. So you got to split, but you're splitting from 18. Usually when you split, you get 21, but here you get 18, which is still okay. 
You don't get the speed boost, but you get 20 points of melee evasion, so double what the other generals got, and then 30% range block chance, and most of all, there's two armor set bonuses on this one, with his unique bow, the Red Wind, and the Overseer item for some very nice boost to his retinue. Then we have King Wu Tugu, who is going to have a run on Lu Bu's armor for the best armor in the game, because low armor, sure, only 44, but he has... Expertise and Instinct combat stats, only 18, not super high, 20 points of evasion on top, 12% speed, 10% armor, 50 points of charge bonus. That's the highest charge bonus I've ever seen on armor. So he's a mix between a Sentinel and a Vanguard, and he has good stats for both of those classes combined on his armor. So very strong general here in the game. Then we have King Duo who has 44 18, 10, 30, 12, everything standard, cunning focused. So nothing to say here. Then we have a few honorable mentions. There are actually a ton of armors for the Naman faction that are unique. And there are a ton of minor unique art among all the lieutenants of these key factions. There's 19 tribes in the Naman faction, and everyone has at least one, if not two, of these special characters. So people like Ah Hui Nan, Dong Tu Na, Jin Huan San Jie, Meng You, uh, you have Dai Lai. All those generals have an armor that's unique to them. Follows the same rule. The standard rule is 44 armor base, the stat that's correlated with them, evasion 10 points, 30% range block chance, and 12% speed. And that's how they did a World Betrayed. And before we end this, there's a few more characters that was introduced in World Betrayed. We got three Han generals and Shi Xie. So starting with the Han generals that was introduced, we have Li Ru, who has slightly higher armor than just the base value, which is interesting. 15 points, this is a new number. 18 points of cunning, that part's still standard. Seems like they really like giving out 30% range block chance and 10 points of melee evasion, but no speed boost for him. So not the Nanman stats here. Then we have Xun Yu, also 15 here. So I have no idea why these two robes are given 15 instead of 10. You also get the 10 points of melee evasion, 30% range block chance. So here things just got a little stale. I think they got a little lazy with varying the bonuses for these armors. You just get these two, and these two don't get speed boosts, and that seems to be the only difference. And then we have Wei Yan. So once again, a new armor value, 50, but the bonuses below are the same. Once again, the same as the Neman bonuses with no speed boost. And then finally, Shi Xie, who gets something different. He gets 55 armor base for his robe. Makes no sense. 18 points of cunning. Sure. Would be better if it was 15, 6. 6 points of authority, I think. And then you also get 30% range block chance, 12 points of charge bonus, and he has the Celestial Fury and the Tactician Design, which is the Imperial Sword and the Imperial Bow combo that now only works with his armor. So that part's also a bit weird. Uh, but overall, that's his stats. Um, I think they're... You know, pretty standard. The 12 points of charge bonus, once again, another strategist makes very little sense here. But overall, that's kind of what we have with all the armors in the game. So with that, we have completely done an overview of every single item in the game from weapons, armors, mounts, followers, and accessories. And we're going to be completing our item overview series. Now, of course, with future patches and future DLCs, we're going to get new items. We'll talk about those when those get launched. But for now, Hopefully you guys enjoyed this series, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye!